Viewer discretion is advised. Police discovered 053 in the deceased bodies of the couple within the same room. Madeline had died from multiple stab wounds inflicted by Andrew, who had died from a massive heart attack. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Euclid Class Object SCP-053. SCP-053, also known as the young girl, is a small three-year-old girl. She is capable of basic speech and appears to be slightly above average in terms of mental development. Her personality is generally pleasant and she rarely seems to get upset. However, she will appear agitated when in a large group. Any and all humans over the age of three who engage in eye contact and physical touch or those who remain around 053 for longer than 10 minutes rapidly become irrational, paranoid, and homicidal. Most, if not all, of these feelings will be directed at 053, and afflicted subjects will attempt to kill 053 after first killing or driving off all humans visible to them. Those attempting to kill 053 will suffer massive heart attacks or seizures and die seconds after inflicting physical damage to 053. However, 053 has a healing factor that allows her to regenerate almost instantaneously from any wound. According to a recovery log, SCP-053 was discovered on July 10, 2008 in Pennsylvania at the residence of Andrew and Madeline. Police who attempted to interact with 053 also suffered from 053's anomalous effects, resulting in five additional casualties before implanted Foundation agents assessed the situation and properly secured the subject. Class A amnestic drugs were administered to all non-personnel involved, including Andrew's parents in Florida, as they had been exposed to information regarding SCP-053 through communication with Andrew. Since June 5, 2004, Andrew had been sending his mother news and updates on SCP-053. They named her as Abby. Below is the documentation log from four years ago, first email about Abby, to July 10, 2008, the last email sent out by Andrew to his mother. June 5, 2004. Hey mom, sorry I haven't emailed you throughout the past month. Things have been pretty busy, but I have great news. You're gonna be a grandma. We found out yesterday that Maddie's pregnant and we've already started turning the guest room into a baby room. Good thing I got a pay raise last week. We gotta think of the baby now. Hope to hear from you soon. March 7, 2005. It's a girl. She was born last night around 10 at night. Madeline's water broke as she was going to sleep. We drove to the hospital so fast. I think I almost hit someone. Jesus, waiting for the doctors to deliver her felt like years. Now, as I type this email, she's downstairs, fast asleep in Maddie's arms. We named her Abby, and she's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I'll send pictures soon. March 8, 2006 Hey mom, Abby's first birthday was yesterday. Howard and Rachel even showed up. Got to see their niece for the first time. Too bad you and dad are all the way down in Florida. We'll have to visit when Abby's older. Love you. June 24, 2008 there's been an accident. We were at the playground and we took our eyes off of her for one second and she fell off of the jungle gym and landed on her head. I saw blood. The doctor said she'll recover fine, but I can't sleep. It is all my fault. June 25th, 2008. The hospital called and said that Abby will have to stay there for a few more days, but she's all patched up and on the fast track to recovery. No brain damage or anything, it seems. I'm just glad my baby is going to be okay. July 2nd, 2008. Mom, there's something wrong with Abby. I mean, she looks and acts perfectly fine, but I know something isn't right with her. Madeline says she feels it too. We started feeling it after Abby's injury at the playground. We've had the doctors look her over, but as far as they're concerned, they couldn't identify any permanent damage, physical or mental. But I just know there's something wrong with her. July 5, 2008 We got an email from Dr. Williams today. He says that he's been able to identify problems exist in Abby, but he can't determine if they're physical or mental. It just doesn't make any sense, he says. He claimed that whenever he was around her, he couldn't shake the feeling of wrongness. The staff who were working with him agreed, apparently. He didn't tell us at first because he didn't want Maddie and I to worry. 
but it appears that he just couldn't keep quiet any longer. What's wrong with my daughter? July 9th, 2008. I can't even look at Abby for more than a few seconds at a time now. There's something about her now and it just shouldn't be. When I'm around her, I just get this awful, indescribable feeling. Like I'd rather be anywhere else but next to my own daughter. I try and limit my interaction with her as much as I possibly can. It's terrible. But being around her, it makes me want to throw up. It's inside of her, in her eyes, in her skin, everything about her. I just don't know what it is. July 10th, 2008. I touched her hand. It felt so wrong. Madeline said she felt it too, but she believes that it's something inside of her. I'm gonna kill them both. I'm gonna kill that and I'm gonna kill that thing. It needs to die. After receiving the last email, Andrew's mother quickly phoned the local police to check on his son. Soon after, police discovered 053 and the deceased bodies of the couple within the same room. Madeline had died from multiple stab wounds inflicted by Andrew, who had died from a massive heart attack shortly afterward, believed to have been caused by 053's anomalous effects. Following this incident, 053 was contained by the foundation. 053 is to be contained in an area no less than 5 by 5 meters and given adequate room to move. Toys, books, games, and other recreational devices are to be provided and rotated every three months. Proper bedding, bathroom, and medical facilities are to be maintained at all times. In addition, 053 is also given three meals a day, alongside snacks if requested. Anyone who enters her chamber must wear an eye-covering suit for safety concerns. And while gifts from her are allowed to be accepted, they must be removed from the room. Only one person is allowed in her room in any given instance, and they are only permitted to stay for no longer than 10 minutes. Any sharp objects or firearms are banned from her room, and anyone who begins to act erratically, scream, or attempt to grab 053 are to be removed and quarantined. In a termination test, the Foundation introduced SCP-682 to SCP-053. 682 appeared to be very confused and showed no signs of being affected by 053. Initially, 053 appeared to be afraid of 682 and hid behind a chair in her containment area. 682 then lowered itself to the ground, resting its head on the floor and spoke after a while. 053 approached 682 and after several seconds of hesitation, she briefly touched SCP-682 before quickly returning to her hiding place. 682 had no reaction. 053 approached 682 and pat its head, causing it to exhale through its forward nostrils. SCP-053 clapped and hopped in place several times before embracing the head of SCP-682. For the remainder of the testing period, 682 did not feel frustrated by spending time with this small child like he did in every other test. He understood that the child was a hated thing as well, one that had suffered like him. They were alike in that way. He had attempted to break out a few times anyways to find out where the disgusting researchers were watching from and find out if they had hurt her as they had him. This had, however, frightened 053. So, for the time being, he allowed himself to be decorated with a cowboy hat that was too small. Although he appreciated how oddly pleasant and relaxing it was when her tiny arms hugged his scarred, scaly back and demanded to be carried around. Eventually, 053 grew tired, yawning and rubbing her eyes with tiny fists. 682 lifted the child carefully in his teeth by the back of her shirt and carried her off to bed, placing her gently on the mattress and circling the bed once twice, three times, before curling around her in a protective little ring. Soon enough, 053 was fast asleep, and he was her new protector. Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber Talks, where I share my life story, thoughts, and opinions. Just click on the link in the description to enter the rubber's world. Before we end this video, we are proud to present these incredibly sweet pieces of fan art. A big thank you to all of you. You can now send us your fan art, and we will be more than happy to show off your best art piece in our next video. Check out our description below on how to submit. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Which SCP do you want to see in the next video and why it is interesting? Let us know in the comment below. We will draw your story and share it with the world.
Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. Please share it to your friends if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye bye.